Hello and a very warm welcome to the Theme Park Worldwide YouTube channel and this special one-off video where I'm going to be telling you how to get to some of the best theme parks in Europe. Now as you all know for the past five years Theme Park Worldwide has visited a lot of theme parks and of course in this video we're going to be focusing on the parks that I visited in Europe. Now I won't be covering all the different theme parks in Europe, I'm only going to cover the ones that I've been to. Uh, now I'm not just going to tell you how to get to these parks, I'm also going to tell you where the best places are to stay, where the best places are to get park tickets from uh, and it's going to be a really good video. It's something that a lot of people, especially our subscribers, have asked for. Uh, a lot of you want to get out there to some of the parks that I've been to, uh, like Leesburg, Europa, Port Aventura, they want to go out to these parks but they're not sure on how to get the best deals uh, and that sort of thing. So that's what I'm going to be covering. Uh, the reason I'm not going to be covering all the parks in Europe is because I've not visited them all myself yet. I think it'd be unfair to share how to get to these parks uh, and stuff just from looking online uh, and not actually doing it myself. So I'm going to tell you the ones that I've been to, which is a good fair few theme parks throughout Europe. Uh, and I'm sure it's something you're all going to really appreciate. Of course, any prices and facts that I do mention in this video are accurate as of February 2016. So if you are watching this in the future, uh, prices can change and obviously things like buses and transport links can change over time. Uh, well, this is as of February 2016, uh, how to book and how to go about getting to these theme parks in Europe. Right, without further ado, let's kick straight off with our first park, it's Port Aventura. First up then, it's Port Aventura, a fantastic family theme park located in the town of Salu in Spain. Uh, now, the local airports of this park are Reyes and also Barcelona Al Prat. However, Reyes Airport can sometimes be known as Reyes Barcelona on certain uh, flight websites. So, flights are operated to Reyes from some UK airports, but mainly Ryanair and Jet2, but they are very limited as it's a small airport. So, in a second, I'll tell you how to get from Barcelona Al Prat, which is the main airport and the one you're most likely to come into uh, if you're going to be visiting Port Aventura. But first, I'll tell you about Reyes. Some of you might want to get there, especially if you're living in London, they do operate flights regularly from Stansted uh, to Reyes Airport. So, if you arrive at Reyes, it's a tiny airport, very small, just the one terminal. There's a couple of options of getting to Port Aventura. You can take the bus or you can get a taxi. If there's one or two of you, the bus is the best option. If there's three, four or more, all you need to do, I like that little rhyme, I'll use that again, uh, all you need to do is get a taxi. It will be cheap, a taxi will be around 30 to 40 euros. Ask for Port Aventura, your hotel there, or in Salou, uh, and that'll get you straight there, nice and easy in around 20 minutes. The other option is getting the bus. Now the bus is a time very well, the normally time to when the flights come in, uh, a bus will be outside around 45 minutes to an hour after. The bus will cost around 10 euros each way, it's not too bad at all, uh, but you can see why I'm saying if there's more of you, get a taxi. Literally, you come into your terminal, take a left out the front door, it's a tiny place, it's not like Heathrow or anything, and you'll see on the left hand side some buses parked up and some times. All you need to do is get on one of them buses. It's operated by a bus planner and that'll take you to Salou in around 45 minutes uh, to an hour. It might drop off in Salou and not all buses stop at Port Aventura, so make sure you ask the driver. But when I get onto the hotels in a second, you'll see why you don't actually have to stay on site at Port Aventura to be able to really enjoy it and be close to the park. Um, but just bear that in mind, if you do end up going to Salou, it's a 15 minute walk, uh, well, a 15 to 20 minute walk to Port Aventura from the town of Salou, or five minutes in a taxi, about eight euros it'll cost you. Uh, so it's not too bad at all. So that's how you get in there uh, from Reyes. Nice and easy to do. Uh, and like I say, if you can get to that airport, brilliant. If you can't, don't worry, because you've got three options of getting there from Barcelona Al Prat. Uh, so Barcelona Al Prat is about one hour away from Port Aventura, just outside of Barcelona. Regular flights from many UK airports, you won't struggle getting a flight to there uh, with people like Ryanair, EasyJet, Norwegian. Uh, they are the cheapest. Talking about cheap airlines, Skyscanner is a fantastic website for going on and getting all your price comparisons for the different flights. So if you want to go to any of these parts, look for the closest airport, or now you'll know the closest airport from this video, get on Skyscanner and type it in and see where you want to go. It's a fantastic website, really good comparisons. I use it for all of my trips, uh, so make sure you do that. Okay, so you've arrived at Barcelona Al Prat. How do I get to Port Aventura? Option number one is to get the bus. It's pretty much the same as the bus from Reyes. However, this is a little bit more. 
costs around 30 euros return. You can buy a return ticket on the bus um, from the airport. Now, all you need to do is go to the bus station, which is outside Terminal 1. And um, when you get to Terminal 1, you want to follow the signage downstairs to the bus station. If you come into another terminal at the airport, there is a free shuttle bus that literally connects the terminals. So get on that and make sure you get to Terminal 1 for the bus station. The bus takes around 1 hour 20 minutes. Uh, and like I say, you buy your tickets on board for that one. That'll drop you off in Salou or Port Aventura. Make sure you ask the driver. Uh, but most of the buses do stop at the Port Aventura hotels. Um, so it's well worth checking out. For more information on them buses and the exact times, go onto Bus Planner's website. Uh, and they've got all the information on there with different times and how you can connect them up with your flights. So, um, literally your next option is you can get the train so what you want to do, again, if you're not at the train station when you come out and there's no signs, get on one of the buses and that will take you to the train station uh, at the terminal. What you want to do is get a train straight into the centre of Barcelona. Uh, the C2 train to Asteo Sants. I'll put that just below there as my, I can't pronounce things, my pronunciation is awful. Uh, Asteo Sants. Uh, so what you want to do is when you get to there, uh, you'll need to change and get another bus. There's plenty, uh, another train. There's plenty of trains an hour running to Saloon. Uh, the journey takes around an hour in total, usually slightly cheaper uh, than the bus as well, and faster, especially if you want to see Barcelona on the way or on the way back from your visit. So, literally, you go into the station, you're gonna put in Salou uh, on the ticket machine, paying euros, and off you go, it's two trains, one change. If you do have any trouble, they speak a lot of English around there, it is a British tourist hotspot, um, so you won't come into any trouble with getting there to the park. Your third option is getting a taxi. If there's four, five, six of you, what you wanna do is get a taxi. It probably will be cheaper than the train and the bus, uh, if you do want to do that, and that's worth doing pre-booking a taxi uh, from a website before you go. So, that is pretty much how to get to Port Aventura. But as I said in this video, I'm not just going to tell you how to get there. I'm just going to give you tips on where to stay, and also a bit more information about how to get your tickets and the best deals. So, Salou is a seaside resort local to other attractions like the beach, which is about a mile and a half away from Port Aventura, Aquapolis, another water park other than the one uh, Costa Caribe at Port Aventura, and also the resort has got five on-site hotels at Port Aventura. The closest hotels to the park are Hotel Port Aventura and the Gold River. Each of those have a direct entrance to the park. They have their own turnstiles, meaning you do not need to go to another main entrance to get in. It's straight, easy access to the park. So, however, one thing to remember is the Gold River is about a 40 minute walk from the town of Salou. It was built around the back of Port Aventura. Why? I don't know. Um, so you need to walk all the way round if you want to get to Salou. There's a lot of fences up. It's a nightmare if you want to go into town in the evening. So just bear that in mind. Stay in the Port Aventura Hotel. That's the best option. It's literally right at the entrance and it also takes 15 minutes if you want to walk into Salou. Uh, El Paso Hotel, which is the all-inclusive, that's a five minute walk. Uh, from the park and also Caribi which is a 10 minute walk or a 5 minute free tram ride uh, to the park. That's the best option. What I would suggest for you guys is staying in the Port Ventura Hotel. It's absolutely fantastic. You can't fault it. Beautiful views of Mediterranean Lagoon and Shambhala and of course um, you get the easy access into the park via your own entrance which is brilliant. So in terms of prices for the hotels, you best book in as soon as you know you want to go, get it booked. They do some fantastic deals to Port Ventura on their website. Uh, in terms of prices, yes, the PA hotels are more expensive than staying in the town of Salou, which I'll get onto in a second, but it's a great option if you really want to live the Port Ventura experience and stay on site. Other benefits include free entry into the parks. Yes, that's right. If you're staying in their hotels, you will get unlimited free entry into the hotel. It's quite a cool system. You get like a little room key card and that literally scans uh, as your park entrance ticket. It opens your door to your room, uh, which means if there's four of you, you'll get four keys to your room. Fantastic. Get on the Port Ventura website, check out the hotels and you'll really have a fantastic time. If you want to do it a little bit cheaper, stay in Salou. 15 minute walk or a five minute ride on one of the little trains, what they do, uh, an additional cost up to Port Ventura. Uh, now, some hotels uh, in the area are brilliant. Some that I can think of are the ones, if you look at, on Google Maps at Port Ventura, uh, there is a roundabout just down from the park. There's loads of hotels around there. It's 10, 15 minute walk. 
and the prices can be a lot cheaper. If you're doing that, obviously you won't get your park tickets included. Uh, so if you're working out prices, you want to work out, well, I'm hanging on, and now I'm going for five days. Is it cheaper for me to stay on site and get the free park tickets, or is it still cheaper for me to stay off site and buy park tickets? Uh, but when I do buy part tickets, there's a couple of different websites that you can use. Uh, however, one of my favourite websites, Attraction Tickets, they'll do some great deals on your park uh, admission tickets. They'll do five day tickets, uh, they'll do three day tickets, two day tickets, and even a one day ticket can be cheaper uh, by booking it online in advance. Um, so that's basically it. The end result of that is your best thing to do if you want the ultimate port venture experience, get a flight to Reyes Airport, nice and easy, and stay on site at Hotel Port Aventura. They're my opinion on the two uh, best options for that one. That's Port Aventura. Let's move on to our next park. And how do you get there? Next up then is Liseberg Amusement Park, located in the city centre of Gothenburg, Sweden. Home to the likes of Balver, Atmosphere, Kanonen, Liseberg Bannon, and of course, Helix, the map mega coaster that opened in 2014. So, this park is literally slap bang in the city centre of Gothenburg. Uh, imagine London with a theme park right next to the House of Parliament. That's literally what this is, it's slap bang in the middle. How do we get there? Well, flights are quite limited from UK airports, so check Skyscanner out for this one. But, uh, when you're booking flights, you want to make sure you're booking them to Gothenburg Landvetter Airport. You can get flights with Ryanair and Norwegian at the best prices. Um, so, Gothenburg Landvetter is a small airport with very easy transfer links to the parks. So, all you need to do when you get to the airport, walk out the doors, and you will literally see the buses right in front of you. It's only got the one terminal, it's very small. And it's a 25 minute bus ride to Gothenburg city centre um, from the station. Uh, at the airport. So with tickets, you'll need to buy them from a machine um, outside the airport that only accepts cards um, just to make you aware. You will need to buy them from that. However, if you do go inside, there is also an info booth where you can pay cash. But if you just landed, you want to get the bus, get straight on, uh, you know, you want to use your card and pay on the machine um, with that one. So it costs around 225 Swedish kroner which sounds like a lot of money. That's about eight pounds each way, 16 pound return. Uh, again, you can pay on the machine or book online for a discounted fare. Um, so what this bus will do, it's run by the company uh, Flag Bus Arana, uh, and they run very regular throughout the day. Um, so you won't have, a, have problems getting from the airport. So uh, you want to get the bus to the Niels Ericsson terminal. Literally make sure you ask when you get to the airport, I need to go to the center of Gothenburg, You'll see the bus is very easy. Nils Ericsson Terminal, which is basically the main transport hub of Gothenburg city centre. That takes around 25 minutes to get there. Once you arrive, um, Leesburg's a 20 minute walk away. Literally follow the signpost, 20 minutes and you're there. Or uh, you can jump on the tram uh, from just outside the Nils Ericsson Terminal. And that'll take just less than 10 minutes uh, and you need to buy your tram ticket from the machine uh, at the tram stop there as well. Uh, you want to take the yellow line, which is number two, uh, to Korsvarven Station, uh, and then you'll literally see the park. You'll see the park's big Ferris wheel, uh, atmosphere, the drop tower, uh, just there. So that's pretty much the easiest way to get there. Uh, you can also get a taxi as well. Never done it myself, but I know people that have. They said it's quite cheap, uh, and it might work out cheaper doing that um, than getting the bus if there's a lot of you. So, uh, Leesburg, literally in the centre of Gothenburg. Uh, making it very, very easy to get accommodation there. The Leesburg Hotel is located at just under 10 minute walk from the main entrance. Uh, it's not actually on site, it's just a little bit further out down a street. Uh, if you open up maps, you'll see how Leesburg is literally in the middle of a city, uh, which is crazy to think, it's, it's brilliant. That's what makes it really good fun. Because uh, when you're inside the park, you know, you can see all the skyscrapers, Gothia Towers and everything, which is great, uh, which is really good. Staying on site at the uh, Leesburg Hotel means you will get added bonuses like a Helix ERT, which runs most mornings. Check the hotel details and ask, will I get ERT on Helix? Most of the time, they'll say yes and we'll give you the information with that one. There's also plenty of other hotels to, to go with. Use booking.com um, for the best deals with that one. Gothia Towers is somewhere that's beautiful. Uh, a lot of us have stayed there. It's literally opposite Leesburg's entrance. Amazing views. It's like a massive building. Uh, you can't miss it, Gothia Towers. It's a few towers together. It's got lifts and it's even got a swimming pool like hanging off the building, which is crazy. Uh, really modern in Sweden. Really nice, really clean area. 
Um, but literally, that provides fantastic views at reasonable prices. Check out booking.com, which is what I use when I'm booking hotels out there at the Europe parks. In terms of park tickets then, you want to book your tickets online before you visit. The park operates a wristband system similar to that of Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Uh, so park entrance must be paid for and then you get a wristband uh, extra. So you can't just walk into the park uh, for free. You do need to pay for an admission fee and get the, a wristband if you want to ride as well. The best option is book online and book the all-in-one ticket. It's literally known on Lee Spoo's website as an all-in-one uh, for either one or two days. That's what I recommend for that park. Uh, very good price if you do that online and that is the best way of getting tickets for Leesburg. That's it then, Leesburg Amusement Park, fantastic place to visit. Not a huge park, but I'd definitely say two days if you want plenty of re-rides. Where else in Europe can you go to see Mickey and his friends other than Disneyland Paris? It's a fantastic resort, the busiest theme park in Europe, home to two theme parks, Disneyland Park and the Walt Disney Studios Park, which is literally just next door. Um, so if you want to get out there, it's very, very easy to do. The best option is the Eurostar. Uh, now it's a very easy way of reaching the park, takes two and a half hours from London, and it's great value if booked in advance by a long way. You wanna be booking the Eurostar over six months in advance. So if you plan a trip for the next few months, then don't bother with that option. I'll tell you about the flights in a second. Um, but I've got fares as low as £69 return on the Eurostar before. So make sure you do check out Eurostar's website. Plenty of time in advance if you're going to go with that option. Two and a half hours straight into the Disneyland Resort uh, and you're going to be there. You're going to be really enjoying yourself at the park in no time at all. Got a bit more time on your hands uh, and it might be cheaper and it is fly to Charles de Gaulle which is the main airport for Paris. It's a massive transport hub for Europe and flights operate for many different airlines from a variety of different airports in the UK. Best prices can be found on Skyscanner. You're going to be fed up with me saying that by the end of this. Uh, so make sure you check that out if you've not seen it before. And usually if you book your flights over two months in advance you'll get some great flights uh, over to Charles de Gaulle. The fastest way of getting from Charles de Gaulle to Disneyland Paris is the TGV train, which sounds amazing. I love it. It's a 200 mile an hour high speed rail link to Disneyland Resort Paris, and it takes 12 minutes, which is amazing. It can be quite expensive if you don't book it in advance, so try your best to before you visit. If not, there is a ticket machine which is located at Terminal 2 of Charles de Gaulle Airport, uh, but what we want to do is get on that. Literally so easy. I've had fares as low as 15 euro before each way. Uh, it takes 12 minutes, no messing. Within an hour, you're going to be checked in and on the park. Uh, but make sure you book transfer, transfers as early as possible as it can get very expensive. Other options than that uh, is you can get the Magical Shuttle, which I would say is the second best option to go for. Uh, the Magical Shuttle runs literally from the uh, bus station outside Terminal 2. It takes around 45 minutes to an hour. Subject to traffic, can be quite busy around Paris. Uh, and it's expensive uh, way of traveling to the park, but it's the easiest option to do uh, as well. You know, I mean, if you don't want to get the train, that's your other easy option. I wouldn't go for stuff like taxis and stuff. It'll cost you a fortune around there. Another option to do, this one can take the longest, but it can also be the cheapest. And that's by getting an RER train, which is a normal speed train from Charles de Gaulle. Um, so what you need to do with this, it will require a transfer uh, at Chalet La Halle station. So Chalet La Halle, which is in the centre of Paris. So if you don't want to go to the centre of Paris, avoid it. If you want to do some sightseeing in Paris on your way or your way back, go with this option. Book a hotel up in Paris from booking.com and see it either on the way or the way back. Literally, Chalet La Halle's in the centre of Paris and you can get the subways to anywhere else around the area nice and easy. Uh, but that's a completely different thing to talk about uh, other than Disneyland Paris, so I'm not going to go into that. But Paris is a great city to visit. Uh, check out our vlogs if you've not seen them. So, this will take around 80 minutes, roughly. Uh, each way costs around 10 to 15 euro, but it's easy to do. Uh, so it's easy to do if you know what you're doing, but if you want to go with the other options, they are the easiest and, you know, if you want to go over that, I don't blame you at all other than this. I've done this a few times because I've done sightseeing along the way or park asterisks, which I'll get onto in the next section. Um, but yeah, around 80 minutes, you change the channel of hell and then it's straight um, to Mont uh, to straight into Disneyland Station. Um, you know, it, it's quite easy to do. I've done it a few times myself, but if you're not confident with that, go with the other options. 
going on to transport um, from, from sort of round the park, very, very easy if you're staying in the on-site hotels. Literally, there's buses uh, all the way around. And also, if you're staying just outside in the centre of Marleville, uh, then you can also get the train in each day as well. But I'll get on to that now, talking about hotels. So, staying on-site at Disney can be a very magical experience, and it can be cheap if booked online in advance. Disneyland Paris love doing special offers on their website, especially February, March time of year, later in the year, September, October. They'll do two days, two nights free which is literally does what it says on the tin. Two days and two nights free with free entry. Staying in the Disney hotels, you'll get your free entry to the parks. You'll get a two park unlimited hopper, um, which makes it very reasonable. Doing this can save huge amounts of money uh, if you're doing this. It can make a stay on site very, very, very reasonable. So uh, if you want to be doing that, literally book it straight through Disney's online website. Um, packages normally include your Harper passes, so make sure you check that out uh, if you do that. With staying on site, you'll also get two hours of extra magic hours each morning in the park, which normally includes large attractions such as Space Mountain Mission 2, It's a Small World, and the Fantasyland rides as well. So make sure you do check that out when booking. Don't want to stay on site or you've missed on the offers, then stay in Mount Lavelle. It's literally five minutes away on the train, 20 minute walk um, from Disney Village, which is sort of the central hub at Disneyland Paris. Uh, and there's loads of hotels around there that can be booked really, really cheap. I stayed around there with, with Alex from the vlogs a couple of years back. We had a great time. You've also got a big shopping centre. There's a sea life centre. Loads of other stuff to see in the area as well, other than Disneyland. Uh, but it's in Disney's sort of circle. Disney's got a massive road going around it. And it's sort of within that. The actual town was built when they were building Disneyland Paris for all the workers and their families. So interesting fact for you there. So that's how close it is to the parks. It's brilliant. Really easy to stay there. Um, literally, you can get some really cheap deals. So check out booking.com for that. A lot of the hotels in the area also will run free buses to Disneyland, par uh, to Disneyland parks. I mean, what more could you want? Nice and easy. Uh, so make sure you do check that out. Uh, the best deal for tickets is, of course, staying on site with your free hopper tickets. But if not, pre-booking is a must for a good deal. Disney charge an absolute fortune. You'll need to get a mortgage to take out tickets if you're buying them on the day. Uh, you want to buy them online, attraction tickets direct, along with some other good online sites uh, have some brilliant deals, but attraction tickets direct, go with them. They'll do some fantastic tickets, uh, especially with your hopper passes. That's Disneyland Paris, but make sure if you can do your best deal with that one, stay on site, get the two days, two nights free. You'll get your two hours magic hours. You'll get your two day park hoppers, uh, your two park hoppers and you're having a fantastic time. Check that out on Disneyland Paris website. Next up then is Park Asterix, which is located in Palais, France, and it's located literally next door to the A1 motorway, and it's not near absolutely anything else. It's in the middle of nowhere, but it's a very easy park to visit, especially on a combi trip with Disney, uh, as I've just mentioned. Uh, so what you want to do, the closest airport is Charles de Gaulle, the same as if you're visiting Disney. Uh, and flights operate for many uh, different airlines from various UK airports. Uh, and again, check out Skyscanner for the best flight deals. Uh, usually cheapest if you've booked them over two months in advance, especially with budget airlines. Park Asterix then, you got some great rides, including Tony Isaias, one of the best woods I've ever been on. Goodrix, not quite as good, but it's still worth checking out. Uh, they've got a new ride launching next year there in 2017, and they've also got b and Invert Osiris, which is beautiful. Um, so, how do we get there? So, literally, when you come into the airport, head to Terminal 1 or Terminal 3 uh, and go to the bus stations at either of those terminals. Here, you can go to a little booth. You'll see it, literally loads of Park Asterix posters near the bus station. A little booth, and you can purchase tickets from a well-signed posted kiosk for around €10 Euro return. Loads of departures, normally hourly throughout the day, and journey takes around 20 minutes, and that is literally how you get to Park Asterix. You'll fly in, Terminal 1 or 3, get on the bus, off you go. You're there in 20 minutes at Park Asterix. They run till an hour after park close as well. You can do Park Asterix in a day if you really want to. Um, same with other parts such as Leesburg, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it. If you go in Park Asterix, combine it with a trip to Disney or go to Park Asterix for two days. Like I say, it's located in the middle of nowhere, um, but it's great to do on a trip to Disney because you can literally then 
after, maybe you've, you flew in, do Asterix for a day, go back to the airport and then get the bus to Disney or get the, the TGV train to Disney. Really easy to do, I've done that numerous times. Well, every time I've been to Asterix, I've done it with Disney. Um, but if you're not staying at Disneyland Paris and you've got nothing to do with Disney on your trip, then a daily bus operates from outside the Louvre um, station or Palais Royale, as it's called, and it's around 25 euro return. It'll depart once a day and more details can be found on the Park Asterix website under the section how to get here. Uh, not how to get here to the World of Theme Parks, how to get there to Park Asterix. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Uh, the best option with that, Head to Disney first, leave Disney early morning if you're coming back on your day departure, head to the airport, get a bus to the park for your return flight. Um, if you do that, the park also has a fantastic luggage hold, comes as a small charge, but why not, coming back from Disney, stop off for the day at Asterix before you fly home. Really easy to do. Uh, in terms of accommodation around there, you want to be staying in an airport hotel. If you're literally going to Asterix, stay in one of the airport hotels and commute each day by the bus. Best option of getting to Park Asterix in France. Home to the likes of Raptor, Oblivion the Black Hole, I Call Sari, and a fantastic selection of family and thrill attractions. It's Gardaland, located at Lake Garda in Italy, uh, in the town of Casanovo del Garda. Uh, the closest airport to here is Verona Villafranca. It's just 15 miles from the park, and select flights from the UK will go to Verona. We actually had to travel down to London to get here, so in terms of flying out there, it's not that easy from the UK, but Skyscan is your best website for looking at that one. Uh, you want to go to Verona Villafranca. So, when you arrive at the airport, you want to take the train uh, to Verona Porta Nuva Station, then catch a train to Pasecha Station. My pronunciation's awful, I'll put it on the screen, um, where a free shuttle to the park does operate. It's two trains and a free shuttle, and that'll cost you around 15 euro each way, uh, take about one hour, 30 minutes. However, if there's more than one of you, and you're not going on your own, which I'm sure none of you are, then go for a taxi. It'll cost you 40 to 50 euro. It'll take half an hour uh, to 40 minutes to straight to guard land, and you're laughing. If there's four of you, it's 10 euro each, and it's a lot easier than doing that, a lot quicker. Uh, so go with the taxi. Literally, you come out of the airport, small airport again, guys, uh, loads of taxis out the front. Make sure you go for that option. Um, if you want to. However, if you do fancy trying any of this other public transport that I'm going on about, a fantastic website to use is something called Rome to Rio. Um, it's Rome with an actual two, Rio, uh, and that is great for planning routes. It tells you sort of, you literally type in anywhere in the world where you are and where you want to go, and it will tell you how to get there, public transport wise. Really good, Rome to Rio. Uh, so, when you get to Garland then, literally you're going to want somewhere to stay for a few nights. Garland has two fantastic on-site hotels as of 2016. When we stayed last year, there was only one. They were building the new Adventure Hotel, uh, but it was beautiful. It's located around two miles from the actual park, but they run a free shuttle bus between uh, the park and, of course, the hotels. The reason it's quite far away, I don't know the answer to that, but uh, it means you've got some really nice scenery around. There's nothing around. You can't just walk to, like, a McDonald's and stuff. Uh, well, you can, but it'll take you an hour, like we tried. <laughs> Uh, but it's literally in the middle of nowhere again, this one. That isn't a joke, by the way. We actually did that. Ask Joe and Beth who I went with in the vlog. Um, but yeah, if you don't want to be going to that hotel, uh, the smaller and cheaper hotels available in the local town, which is also two miles from the park. Um, but you then also, I would assume, be able to catch the free shuttle bus um, from the train station in the town to the park. I've not actually done that myself, but if you didn't want to risk that, you can also, uh, of course, get a taxi or walk if you want to two miles, but I'd probably suggest getting a taxi as the pathway is quite narrow and I don't really recommend doing that really. Um, in terms of park tickets then for Gardaland, cheapest books online through the park's official website with that one. Uh, also, if you've got a Merlin Pass, you do get some sort of discount if you're going to Gardaland uh, and also Heidi Park in Germany, which I'll get out into in this video. Um, but yeah, that's it for Gardaland. Best option then for getting to that one, literally, uh, get yourself to Verona Villafranca Airport, jump in a taxi and stay on site at the hotel. They're your best options for a great trip uh, to Garland in Italy.
Next up is Europa Park, which is located in the village of Rust in Germany. Now, Europa Park's continuously winning the awards. It's one of the best theme parks that I've ever visited. It's absolutely fantastic. It's got so many thrill rides, so many family rides. There really is something out there for everyone, and it's well worth a visit. So, the closest airports are Kalarush Baden Baden and Basel Mulhouse Freiburg. Uh, Ryanair operates flights out there along with EasyJet. Uh, both of them are really good value flights. Check out Skyscanner um, for your flight details details out there but they're the two airports you can choose from and I base that probably on how you want to get to the park so the easiest option now you open it's a hard park to get to I'll be honest it's a really hard one to get to the easiest option uh, is to book an express drive shuttle from either Basel or Baden Baden Airport it's rather expensive uh, but it's nice and easy it'll take about an hour from either one to get you there um, as of February 2016 these are the prices for that like I said if you watched it in the future it could have gone up uh, but it's 99 euros for up to four people sharing from Basel and 130 euros for up to four people sharing from Baden Baden. And uh, so, what 100 euros uh, basically from Basel, split that between four people, 25 euro each, 50 euro return. Not too bad, but it could be a lot cheaper. Um, but if there's two people, it'll still cost you the same. So if you go in and doing that option, try and get four of you to come together, or even if you two other people, ask about if people want to go uh, to Europa, get four of you and book that. Uh, so that's the best way of doing it. Like I say, you book that online, uh, go on Europark's website under how to get to us, and you'll find all the details there. It's uh, all the website, just put it down below here, uh, www.expressdrive.de forward slash Europa Park uh, shuttle. So make sure you do check that out. Uh, however, you can get public transport um, to the park. However, I've never done this. I've always gone with the easiest options. But looking on Rome to Rio, which I mentioned earlier, if you've watched the video, um, it's a great way of getting, sort of working out how to do the transport. I've just looked 2.5 to 3 hours journey uh, for a quick search on Rome to Rio. Uh, and it's also quite costly. It's around 30 euros what I've, from what I've seen return. So obviously it's cheaper than the shuttle, but it takes about 3 hours return time you know you're looking at another three hours so you're spending six hours instead of two hours traveling really so it's up to you would you rather pay more for the shuttle or go with the public transport if you do want to do that check it out on Rome to Rio and that will give you the details on how to do it however if you're happy to drive abroad this is your best option hire a car um, literally from either of the airports it's a 50 minute journey time from Baden Baden one hour 15 from Basel uh, using motorway 5 and that will literally from both ways the park so you've got one airport here one airport here there's a motorway motorway 5 and literally that will get you there uh, the journey is pretty much one straight road and a very simple turn off um, for Europa Park so once you've got to the park um, using either of those three options then you can stay in either five uh, fantastic on-site hotels or you can stay in the village of Rust. It's literally located in a village with loads of different hotels. It's got a little, uh, loads of other shops as well uh, to check out. So in terms of getting food, uh, there's also restaurants and stuff like that. But of course, staying on site can come at a cost. It's moderately priced, I'd say. It's not cheap, but it's not expensive if you book in advance, of course. Uh, however, all the parks are five on site hotels are located a five minute walk uh, from an exclusive entrance for hotel guests. There's also a monorail station if you want to go to the main entrance and also to the teepee dorf, um, which is basically bring your own caravanette. Uh, there's teepees, large accommodation, uh, and that can all be booked through the website. There's like a saloon down there for food. It's a really nice place, and that's the cheapest option to do out of your own parks on site details. But, um, like I say, staying on site one of the five main hotels is a beautiful experience. Um, literally, it's fantastic and you can book that through the website uh, with that one. At certain times throughout the year, and with arrivals on Sundays only, they do a thing called the hotel uh, all-round trip, which is basically you go all around the world in all of their five hotels, basically, and it means, you know, you're on to a winner with that because your luggage gets moved between all the different rooms, uh, you get to stay in Coliseo and Balrock being the two main hotels they've got there, along with the other three, uh, and it's a fantastic deal. However, um, you want to check the website. It sells out quick. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it's already sold out for 2016, so check that out. Um, but that's the Europe round trip, and we've done that before, and um, there's a vlog on the channel which will show you a bit more about that, which is worth uh, checking out. Don't want to stay on site and want to do it as cheap as possible, stay in Rust. There's a selection of really cheap hotels and apartments found on Booking.com. Type in Rust Germany 
and then it'll all come up with a map close to the park and you'll be able to book accommodation from there. Anywhere within the village of Rust is only maximum 15 minute walk from the park. Um, the shops and restaurants, it's only a small village, not a town, not a big town centre or anything. Um, but, you know, it, it's a lovely little quaint village. I really like staying it, uh, in Rust. I've done that most of the times that I've been. I've only actually stayed on site a couple of times. Uh, so it's definitely worth doing that. In terms of ticket details, as of February 2016, it's €84 Euro for a two-day ticket for adults or £72.50 uh, uh, for children. But the best deal uh, is to get the club card, which is the annual pass. It's valid for 12 months and limited use. Uh, and bear in mind the park's open with pretty much all of the rides, apart from a few, uh, over in the winter season as well. And that's €185 Euro for adults, €155 Euro for children. But if you plan on doing lots of other parks in Europe, uh, you can also uh, use that pass to go to these other parks throughout Europe. So obviously Fantasyland, you get a day's entry. F Telling, you get a day's entry. Check out the Europa Park Club Card website, uh, which is basically their annual pass, but they've called it a club card. It's like Tesco um, for the best, de uh, best deals with that one. That's Europa Park. Again, it's not the easiest part to get to, can be quite costly, but if you fancy trying the public transport, get yourself on Rome to Rio and give it a go. If not, go through the shuttle, uh, nice and easy, quite costly, but nice and easy, and it'll get you out there to one of my favorite parks, Europa Park in Germany. Telling is an absolutely beautiful park and it's located in Cathars Hall in the Netherlands. It's literally on the screen just there as my pronunciation is awful. Home to rides such as the now famous Baron 1898 along with some other great coasters, dark rides, water rides. It's got a lot and it's one of the biggest parks in Europe. It's located in the small town then with a few shops uh, and plenty of hotels making it easy for accommodation which I'll get onto in a second. Uh, the closest airport is Eindhoven. Flights to Eindhoven are operated by Ryanair uh, from limited UK airports. And again, Skyscanner is the best place for flights. Uh, there's a comparison website and you want to book your flights around three months before for the best price. Little Sean's tip for you there. So the best thing about this park is how to get to it because it's really, really easy and it's very, very cheap. Uh, you literally all you need to do is get the bus from Eindhoven Airport to Eindhoven Main Train Station. That costs around five euro. You buy the bus ticket at the machine via card, or there's an information booth inside the terminal where you can buy it uh, with cash. Very small terminal is Eindhoven. You'll literally come out. The bus will be there. Uh, make sure you ask the driver if you don't feel confident with that to make sure you're going in the right way, uh, and that will then take you um, to the train station. Um, so that's literally nice and easy to do. So next thing to do, you want to get the train from Eindhoven Station to Tilburg Station. That's around €8. Euro. Pay at the machine in the station and then you make sure you scan your ticket before you ride. This is something we were unsure about. So once you've bought your train ticket, you scan it on like a turnstile, but there's nothing to actually spin. It's literally like a barcode reader um, and then you get on the train. Um, then once you get to Tilburg, it's simply you get the bus to Eftelin. Uh, it's €3 euro you pay on the bus. Um, literally when you come out you'll see a list of different buses look for the bus that goes to the F telling and then jump on that one they run regularly throughout the day sort of every 20 minutes to half an hour uh, and that's three euro so pay on the bus nice and easy to do with that one in terms of where to stay when you're at the F telling then check out the F telling hotel I didn't stay there when I went last year uh, it's not huge but it looks really pretty it's really nice better walk around it's a 10 minute walk to the park uh, via its own entrance uh, and it's also quite a small hotel. It's not a huge thing, um, but the best option is booking.com because you can get some really, really cheap details in Cavers Hall uh, in the town. So literally get on booking.com and make sure you book it from there because you've got the main entrance here uh, and then you've literally got the town just there. So you've got loads of cheap hotels, really easy, uh, nice and easy to do with that one. In terms of park tickets, best place to book is through the park's official website. One of the cheapest parks in Europe for park entry. It's only uh, €34 Euro entry for one day. Uh, and that's at the time of recording, which is February 2016. Get yourself out to F Talent. Nice, easy part to do. Two or three days is probably just right for that one. And of course, you'll get on Baron 1898. Uh, or as Baron and as I like to call it. It's a fantastic coaster. Well worth going out to see.
Next up then, Fantasialand, a lovely park which is home to some fantastic attractions such as Cheer Pass, Black Mamba, Talican, and of course, new for 2016, uh, Taran, a brilliant multi-launch coaster that looks fantastic. Uh, now, the park's located in Brühl, Germany, uh, which is a town on the outside of Cologne, which is a big city. It's quite easy to get there public transport wise, but you need to make sure you know you know what you're doing with this one. You don't want to go over there and think, oh yeah, we'll think about getting to the park when we get there. This one you need to know, it's quite sort of difficult in that respect. But I'm gonna explain it all here for you. So, um, so literally the park's on the outskirts of Brühl. There's literally only houses near the park. There's no close town center within walking distance. Um, literally your local airport is Cologne Bonn. Um, with regular flights from various UK airports, Ryanair, German Wings, they have the best flights. Uh, again, Skyscanner, good to check out for that one. What you want to do then to get to the park from the, the airport, literally you want to get the train from Cologne Bonn Airport to the Cologne Central Station, uh, which is Colm HBF. There's trains every 15 minutes-ish from the airport. That's the nice and easy, nice way to get there. Pay at the ticket machines before you get on. Um, what you want to do then is get the train from Colm HBF to Brule Station. I'll put these all on the screen for you. They run around every 30 minutes-ish. Uh, it's a small station, but then you can get the bus um, from there, which is run by Fantasyland, run by the park, uh, and you pay for the ticket on the bus, and you actually get straight to Fantasyland. So it's two trains and a bus. But it's Cologne is a huge city, and Colm HBF is a huge station. When I went, I'm a expert at this transport now I nearly got on the wrong platform some of their platforms two trains will park up next to each other like that even though one's not departing for ages it'll be there ready and waiting so make sure you're looking at the trains there's literally and where it says it's going um, so like I say nice nice and easy if you follow the instructions basically so Colm HBF uh, you're traveling to from the airport from there to Brule and then a bus um, that costs around 20 euro for that journey each way, 40 euro return, not too bad, uh, could be cheaper, but that's the best option I've found for getting there. Uh, in terms of where to stay, Fantasyland has two amazing hotels, two of the best theme park hotels I've ever seen. Uh, Matambo with views of Black Mamba, the B&M invert coaster. Hotel Lingbu with views of the Chinatown area, uh, which is great. Park tickets though, if you are staying on site, um, are extra on top of the booking, but it's quite an expensive hotel but worth staying and it's great. Uh, but make sure you are aware that your park tickets don't come, uh, including the price, they are extra. Um, Offsite hotels are a few miles away in a taxi or a long walk. I wouldn't recommend walking it. Uh, pay slightly more and stay on site is the best deal with this one. It's not like Port Ventura and Rust in Germany for Europa, where you walk out and there's loads of hotels. It's not like that at all. There's a big motorway next to it. Um, literally houses for a couple of miles. Um, with that one but there is like a little takeaway opposite to the hotels which is really strange I don't know why it's there but there's a little takeaway not owned by the park as far as I know uh, where we do some good food as well um, but park tickets reasonable prices around 60 euro for two days again you know that's pretty reasonable really for that one uh, that's Fantasyland like I say make sure you know what you're doing with that one uh, keep very aware when you're doing the train journey and like I say get out there and see it this year it's going to be great for Taron Good year for it. Next up then is Heidi Park, which is located in Soltau in Germany. It's around five miles from Soltau, uh, which is a town which has got some shops and cafes where you can get some supplies. Uh, there's a couple of supermarkets, that sort of thing. It's not a huge sort of place, but it, you can get all the sort of things what you need for your trip there. Uh, the park is very much out in the forest and out of the way. Uh, it's a great location, stunning, absolutely beautiful scenery, but it is five miles away from Soltau. Apart from that, you won't find any other shops or anything like that. It's a pretty secluded park, but I like that. It makes it a bit more exciting for me. The closest airport is Bremen. Uh, Bremen's also home to the Huss factory, the mate top spins. So there you go, random fact for you. Uh, you can find Huss out there. Maybe give them an email, see if you can have a tour around the factory. Uh, but yeah, flights from very select UK airports with Ryanair to Bremen um, in Germany. So yeah, make sure you uh, use Skyscanner again for that one. The airport then is located in the city centre of Bremen. You fly in, you're literally straight in, you walk out the doors, you're literally on the high street, you know. There's a McDonald's outside the airport for food, it's great. 
Uh, what you want to do is jump on a tram literally right outside, pay before you get on from the machine, get a tram to the HBF station. Uh, that takes around 10 minutes. The HBF is a massive building, beautiful building, um, arch station, you can't miss it. Head inside there and take the train to Saltow. It takes around an hour um, from there. Again, buy your ticket from the station. Throughout the day, there is select trains that go direct. Go for one of them. If not, you can change, but pretty much go for the direct train. It might be a bit more expensive and they're not as regular, but that is the way to uh, go for that. Again, use Rome to Rio, a website um, that you can use. Type in the park and type in the station and it will give you the times and the best way of getting to it and also the cheaper options. So, um, from here, once you arrive uh, in Saltown, it takes sort of, it's around an hour and a half walk to the park. So what I'd recommend, I mean we did that, me and Joe in the vlog, you might remember, we walked, what a bad decision. What you want to do is get a taxi, it's around five miles, um, get a taxi. Or you can get on another train um, to the station which is known as Walter Dingen, uh, which is one mile walk to the park entrance, so it's not too bad. Uh, in terms of where to stay, Heidi Park Adventure Hotel is fantastic, it's got an exclusive entrance into the park. And um, There's also the Heidi Park Holiday Camp, uh, which is basically lodges that look a bit like beach huts. Um, which, you know, it looks nice, but stay in the on-site hotel probably uh, for that one. It's got some great evening entertainment in terms of the shows there as well. But if you want to stay off-site, there's not really many options for this one. Unless you want to stay in somewhere in Saltow, five miles away, you want to go for, I'm going to be very specific now, there is a lovely place called the Hotel of Du Simpel, which is found on booking.com, I'll put it just there, um, so you can see how it's spelled, Of Du Simpel, and that is beautiful. It's literally, we stay in these little wooden shacks, it was really nice, wooden lodge, in the forest, it was gorgeous, 10 minute walk to the park entrance, what more could you want? Really, really nice, uh, but plenty of other hotels can be found, like I say, in Saltow, on booking.com. In terms of park tickets, as of February 2016, a one-day ticket is €45, Euros, um, with other options of adding one more day for €10, Euros, so for two days it's €55, Euro, and a third day for €5, Euro. so for €60 Euro, you get three days, if that's simple enough. Um, but like I say, if you've got a million annual pass in the UK, check out about the details uh, of getting a discounted ticket, because it is a Merlin Park. And it might not be covered on your pass, but you do get some sort of discount. So contact Merlin directly, uh, maybe on their Facebook page, for details on that one. That's Heidi Park, located in Saltal, Germany. Some great rides there, of course. Fluke de Damen, uh, Crake, and of course Colossus, a brilliant wooden coaster. Tivoli Gardens is home to some fantastic rides and again it's another city centre park which is located in the centre of Copenhagen in Denmark. Uh, now the park is literally right in the centre, it's pretty much the same as Leesburg, how it is in Gothenburg, right in the centre, this is the same, it's pretty much even more in the centre I would say. Uh, lots of heritage at this park, some great rides, you've got an old wooden roller coaster, uh, you've got a B&M coaster, it's great park to visit. Uh, it might be quite small but it's definitely a good park to visit for the day. Um, but yes, the closest airport, Copenhagen. Uh, flights from many different airlines from many UK airports. Copenhagen is quite an easy one to get to. Uh, it's quite a big sort of airport for sort of getting around to different places. Uh, that one's more of a hub. But it's very simple to get there. Literally, this is one of the easiest parts you can get to in Europe. Trains run every 10 minutes from the airport direct to the city centre. From here, follow signs by walking to Tivoli. It's literally from the main Copenhagen station, it's five minutes away, it's just round the corner. So literally you can be at that park within about 15 minutes. It does not take long at all. It's cheap, you buy your ticket from the machine before you get on at the airport, and that's as simple as that. Um, very, very simple to, really to get to. In terms of park tickets, um, you know, it offers a wristband system, so same as Blackpool Pleasure Beach Towel. Uh, park entry is around 100 kroner, sounds like a lot of money, but it's around uh, £10. And then a multi-ride ticket is 220 kroner, uh, Danish kroner that is, it's £23 for a one day, uh, which is great. Um, but if you're going over there, of course you might want to stay in a hotel uh, in the centre of Copenhagen. Use booking.com for the best details. Tivoli's also got its own hotel, a short distance walk from the park. 
Uh, well, as far as I know, there's no sort of perks of staying there. So you want to just get a cheaper hotel, centre of Copenhagen, beautiful city to look round, and it's great. But, and this is the big but, Tivoli's a one-day park, but not far away is another park that's a one-day park. It's known as Bakken. Uh, and Bakken, uh, you can literally get here really easy as well. From the same station as what you came into, um, so the central station um, of Copenhagen, what, what you want to do from there is get the train to back in amusement park. Simply, all you need to do is go to Covenhaven Station, there it is, I'll put it there again for you, which is uh, literally from there to Klampenberg, which is where the park is located. Again, I'll put all these just here so you can see them. And it's a signposted 10 minute walk from Klampenberg, um, literally to the station, uh, to the park. So literally that's one of the easiest trips to do. You can go there for two days, cover both parks. That's what me and Chris did last year and it was great. Um, literally with Backen, it's free park entry to walk around. Uh, you pay per ride or an unlimited ride wristbound, which is around 250 uh, Danish kroner, 25 quid. Not too expensive, but it could be a bit cheaper. Uh, but it's worth it. Again, another day park for you up there. They've got some rides like the Intamin uh, ride, which is Tornado, Intamin Spinner. Um, you've got Gerslau Skyfly. They've got some other good rides up there. A classic wooden coaster, of course. Um, it's a great park to visit. But like I say, both of them are really, really easy to do. Like I say, uh, Tivoli and Bakken, you can get between them really easy. The good thing what I didn't mention just about Klampenberg Station, uh, which is you know, for getting to Bakken, that's the final station on that line. So there's no sort of risk of uh, getting lost or anything. You're literally at the end of the line there with regular trains running back till like midnight. So you'd have a great time. Uh, that's Tivoli Gardens and Bakken, two fantastic parks uh, in Copenhagen. Final park I'm going to tell you how to get to is Tato Park in Ashbourne Island. Uh, now the closest airport is Dublin. Flights are operated from most UK airports, many different airlines to Tato Park. It's a massive sort of airport um, and you can literally, you know, you can get there pretty much anywhere. Really cheap, sky scanner, get on it and that'll get you there. Uh, but yeah, literally, if you go down there for a day trip, the airport is around 18 miles from the park. The best option we found when we and Charlotte went was to get a taxi. Uh, it's, it's around 40 to 50 euro, it takes around half an hour in a taxi, but it, get four or five of you, pile you all in the taxi, and that'll be the cheapest option of getting there. In terms of other options of getting there from the airport, there isn't any, unless you're gonna travel into the center of Dublin. So why not do a weekend, stay in Dublin, um, stay in a hotel in the center of Dublin, and then you can get the bus to the park. But midweek, the bus does only run once a day uh, and twice a day on a weekend with that one. The bus is ran uh, by a company called Irene. It's a 45 minute bus journey from the town centre and it's around uh, 10 euros for a return trip. Obviously a lot cheaper than getting the taxi, uh, but like I say, times are quite limited. You're best going for a day trip to be honest and just doing the, uh, the taxi really. 40 to 50 euro, you can't complain at that really if you split between four or five people. Another option, of course, to get to Tato Park is car hire um, from Dublin Airport, which could work out to be the cheapest option, subject to how many in the car. It is a park ticket. Again, it's pretty much like a wristband system. You'll need to pay for entry to the park and then buy your rides on top if you want to do the ride, which I'm sure you will if you're watching this. Um, but yeah, literally, Kuka Lens a brilliant ride. It's worth going out there for the Chris Factory Tour, Dinosaurs, Zip Wires, some other flats, Air Race. Uh, rotator, they've got some really good stuff there, 4D cinema, you can find a day there, it's really good, uh, lots to do in a day, uh, at Tato Park, park tickets, book them online, or buy them on the day, there's not really much difference there, uh, with that one, there we go, that's how to get to Tato Park, located in Ashbourne in Ireland. Thank you very much for watching our video, how to get to some of the best theme parks in Europe. I hope I've made it a little bit easier for you to get out there to some of them parks. I know some of you might not be quite as confident doing some of the public transport options, but now you know how to get there. Again, some of the websites to use that I've mentioned throughout this are Skyscanner for Flights, Booking.com for a fantastic selection of hotels, and Rome to Rio, which is a way of showing you how to get to transport to all these different theme parks. Anywhere in the world you want to go, Rome to Rio is the website to use. Now, of course, all prices, hotel details, transport details, and parks 
are all subject to availability and of course it was correct at the time of recording which is now February 2016. I hope you have a fantastic year and get out to all of those theme parks and of course we'll be doing a lot of them parks here on Theme Park Worldwide ourselves as well where I'll be sharing vlogs and videos here on the channel. Thank you very much for watching and that means it's time to cue those credits. Thank you and have a good year.